Hello, my name is Nancy Strickland, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to tell you about the application bar in Windows Phone 7 Silverlight applications. The application bar is a control that you can use to add a toolbar, like you see here, to your Windows Phone application. This toolbar has two buttons on it. They're called icon buttons, and you can have one to four on your toolbar. You can set the application bar background to be completely opaque, like it shows here, which takes up some of the page content pane, so any image on that pane is made to fit into the space that's left. Or you can set it to be transparent, in which case it overlays some of the content. Now watch as I change this application bar to be transparent. And you see that the background image gets stretched to cover the full content pane, which you can see behind and through the application bar now that it's transparent. You can also use a slide up menu to show more choices. To get the menu to slide up, the user touches the ellipsis, that's these three dots here on the right side of the app bar, and the menu appears like this. You can use this, the slide up menu, when you'd rather have a text description of the choice instead of a little icon for it. Now let's look at some code. Here's how you declare and instantiate your application bar and how you declare an icon button and instantiate it and then add the button to the bar. You can see that the constructor for the icon button has arguments that are the path to an image file, the image that's going to be on the button, and also the URI type of the path, which in this case is relative to the project. And this is how to declare and instantiate a menu item their text, so the only argument to this constructor is the text to be printed, and of course you add it to the menu items collection of the application bar. And here's the code for wiring a button up to an event handler method. It works just the same for a menu item, just declare a handler and add it to the click event and then write the code for it using the signature here. Now let me do a quick hands-on demo for you. I've opened Visual Studio 2010 and I'm here ready to start a new project. You can see that one of the project templates is a Silverlight Windows Phone application. To get that template, I had to do some setup, and I've covered all that setup in another video named Getting Started that's part of this series, so I won't repeat it here. I'll assume that you've already done that setup, so using that template, I'm going to start a new app. First, let me show you that you can create your application bar in XAML. There's some sample code down here that I can uncomment and when I do watch how the app bar with four buttons appears at the bottom of the phone over here obviously there's still coding you have to do these buttons don't have images on them and of course they'll also need event handlers so I'm going to comment this back out and write all the code in C sharp which will generate the equivalent XAML I'm going to open the C sharp file here the first thing I want to do is add a using directive it's using Microsoft.phone.shell so that I can get the assembly that has the application bar class in it. Then I want to create the application bar and I'm going to do it right here in the constructor. Now I've got my application bar, this created it, but of course I want to put a button on it, so I need to have a graphic for that button. I'm going to add that image to the project and just to keep things organized, I'm going to add a new folder named Images to keep it in. So I'll right-click that new folder, add, existing item, and browse to my desktop where I have the image I want to use, whitecircle.png. This is a file I created earlier following the requirements for writing image files for icon buttons. I'm not going to go over those requirements here because this is just a short video, but I'll give you a link to them at the end of the video. Okay, now that image is part of the project, but I have to do one more very important thing. I'm going to select the image file, go down to the properties window, and set the build action, change it from the default, which is resource, to content, and then set the copy to output to copy always. And now that I've got the file, I'm going to use it as part of the code to instantiate the button. So I'm instantiating a new button, and I've got a path here that points to the image file that I want to go on it and something that says that the URI kind is relative meaning that this path is relative to the path to the project itself. 
Now I'll put in some text that will display as a label below the button in the application bar. And now I'll add the button to the collection of buttons on the bar. Now I need to create a delegate for the click event of the button. And I can use my IntelliSense to help me. You can see that I can press Tab to insert it and Tab again to get my handler. And now on the body, I'll insert some code to turn the background of the main page content white. Now I'm going to go back up here and add code for a slide up menu item in the main page constructor also. It's pretty much the same thing. Instantiate an item, add it to the app bar, create and attach a handler. Because the items in the slide up menu don't have icons, in the constructor I just need the text that's going to appear on that menu item. Then I add that menu item to the menu items collection and now I'm creating its handler. So I'll use tab again to create that handler and replace the placeholder exception with this code. You can see that this is a toggle that changes the application bar from being completely opaque to being about half transparent. Okay, now I'm ready to run it. And there's my application. Here is my application bar. Here's the icon that I created as an icon button. If I click it, the background turns white. If I hit the ellipsis over here, I get my slide up menu that says toggle bar opacity. So I'm going to click it once and you can see that it becomes about half transparent. Click it again and it becomes opaque. Okay, now here's that link to the guidelines for creating icon images that I mentioned earlier. And then this link lets you download pre-written application bar icons, which is a lot easier than creating them yourself. And the last link here is the general page on the application bar on MSDN. So that's a quick look at how to use the application bar in a Silverlight phone app. I'll put a copy of the code up on my blog for download, and as I post new videos, I announce it on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.